All the excitement of horse racing, the stories along the backside, expert analysis of the big race. This is Inside Track, presented by the Fairgrounds Race Course and Slots. And here's your host of Inside Track, Charlie Ricks and Bernie Halprin. You know, at the beginning of this meet, something just didn't feel right. And I had uh, Dana out here who comes to the races with me once in a while, and we'll do some pick three and pick four tickets. But every time I put a ticket together, she would lean over and say, did you put Rosie in that leg? Did you put Rosie, did you put her in the mix? She loved Rosie Naprovnik. It was, and I think the handle by the female betters out here has gone down substantially since the recently announced retirement by jockey Rosie Naprovnik, who's on the line with us now. And Rosie, thank you very much for joining us here on Inside Track. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad I could be on this year. Oh, I'm not quite as busy during the racing hours. Well, first of all, congratulations. You're with child, and you sort of took the, the world by surprise, where after you won the distaff with Untappable this year at the Breeders' Cup, you got off your, your mount, uh, maybe didn't even get off the horse yet, and announced that you were retiring. But I like this word that was also included in your sentence. I think you said indefinitely retiring. That, that, that leaves a big question mark in our, in our minds. Well, first of all, thank you, and we're very excited. Um, yes, it is indefinite, and um, no, I mean that it's it, it really. I'm leaving it open ended for myself. I'm not trying to keep any secrets from anybody whether or not I'm going to make a comeback. But uh, you know, I just really playing things by ear and and focusing on on this right now. And you know, I can I'll have every opportunity to focus on riding again if I choose. And you know, if that's uh, you know if I end up not wanting. To to do that then that's perfectly fine as well so it's indefinite and um you know it's i'll have every opportunity to come back if i like to yeah hi rosie bernie halperin here welcome to the program and, and again as charlie said congratulations to you and joe you know, the word indefinite gives you a lot of wiggle room, so that's a real good word. I've been saying on our show since you announced your retirement, I've been saying that it reminds me of like when Kiss or Motley Crue says it's their last tour. <laughs> you know, two or three years later, they're back on tour. So, so I think what's going to happen, and I've said this all kidding aside, it's not like you were some middle-of-the-road rider that is expecting a child and said, you know what, I've had a good career, and I'm going to call it a career now. You're on top of your game. You're one of the top ten riders in the world on anybody's list. I think, personally, you're going to get the itch again. When you feel the time is right, nobody's rushing you back. But uh, as Charlie said, a lot of the female handicappers here at Fairgrounds are lost without you. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I've had you and quite a few other people tell me they're over and under for how long it takes me to come <laughs> back or when they think I might come back. And I really am probably the most... Um, uh, you know, I probably know least more, least less than anybody else, um, because I, you know, it's just something that's very new for me. I, I have uh, been basically tunnel vision um, on focusing on becoming a jockey since I was 13 years old, and or even before then. Uh, so it's been quite a long run, although I'm very young, and you know, my career was only less than less than a decade, almost a decade. Um, but it's been it's been very good. It's been it's it's always been successful. Um, it's been great, and and you know I don't have reasons not to come back um, business wise. You know, finishing out on a positive note, and you know couldn't have been a more positive note with Untappable one in the in the distaff. Um, really sets me up for you know being able to make come back if I want to. And um, but, you know, having said that, I I really put a hundred and ten percent of myself into my career since you know, a very, very young age, and and I, I also feel like I want to put 100% into being a mom, so um, we'll, we'll just see how it works out. Hey, Rosie, Mitch Gibbs here, and I've had the pleasure of interviewing you a couple of years ago. It was a great experience for me. I enjoyed it. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here because, you know, you are at the top of your game. I think of two people that retired at the top of their games as well, John Elway and Barry Sanders. So there is precedent for that, <laughs> that you know, that decision. So uh, 
any way you look at it, you've had a great career, and we love having you. So we're looking forward to you maybe coming back. But obviously, congratulations on having a baby. And uh, tell us a little bit about all the great experiences you had at the fairgrounds. Well, I'll tell you what. I I mean, I really I have had so much success at the fairgrounds. One of my favorite places to race. Uh, we own a home here, and, and we uh, we bought that home at the end of the very first season that I rode here. Um, I have had so much support here um, from the local trainers, from you know the Kentucky trainers, and just such a great go out of here at the fairgrounds, and um, always lots of fans here. So it's been it's, the fairgrounds for me was when I first came here was like a huge, huge question mark and kind of a risk, and and you know kind of trying to take the next step and not really knowing how I would do. So, um, you know, I was I was just really um, extremely pleased with the reception when I first came and, and also, you know, the continued support, uh, which is not always easy to keep everybody happy for four years. So <laughs> maybe I retired before people were going to look for a new fresh face. But, um, but you know, it's just uh, I've had some really, really great support from some of the trainers here at Fairgrounds and, um, and the ones coming from Kentucky and, and just, you know, can't thank everybody enough for all the support that they've given me. Yeah, you know, Rosie, I would have liked to have had a, a hidden camera on James Graham's face when he heard you were retiring, because uh, <laughs> certainly we thought he was the one nipping at your heels and the only one that was really in the in the jockey race with you the last few years. But with that said, what I've heard, and, and let me go back to Mitch's analogy, John Elway, when he retired, yeah, at the top of his game, but he had played a long, long time. I would make the analogy to Rosie more like the Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders could have played another six, seven years. He was really still in his prime. Um, but with that said, Rosie, how do you replace, and you may, not, you may not be feeling this dynamic and experiencing it yet, but how do you expl- replace the exhilaration of being aboard a magnificent equine machine, barreling down the stretch, whipping and driving? How do you replace that thrill? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't really think there's any way to replace that thrill. And there's, you know, jockeys are really the only ones that, that really understand what it's truly really like to be um, you know, in a race, coming out of the gate, driving down the lane, you know, battling with somebody, and it, it is one of the greatest thrills. Um, but I have I have been uh, very, very well occupied um, in my time in, quote, retirement, which has been maybe the busier than ever um, as far as my life goes. Uh, I'm working in the barn with my husband, and he's uh, started off his training career in September and has done extremely, extremely well, so... I'm really having a lot of fun. I'm still at the track every day. Um, I'm still at the track in the afternoons a lot, uh, you know, when we're racing and whatnot. Um, so I'm still around it. I'm still with the horses every day. Um, but even more uh, hands-on with the horses, which is what I really have missed as a jockey because you don't really get that opportunity to, to build, you know, real relationships, everyday relationships with, with a lot of the horses. So um, I've just I've been having a lot of fun. I've been busy. I've been doing different things that are, you know, just as stimulating, really. We're here with Rosie Napravnik. She's four-time title holder, leading jockey, four consecutive years here at the fairgrounds. She's the first woman jockey to win the Louisiana Derby. She's won two Kentucky Oaks at Churchill Downs. And, uh, Rosie, your child, when they get a little older, and they come to you and Joe Sharp and they say, Mom and Dad, I, I want to be a jockey. What are you going to say? Well, when I was younger, my parents were the type of parents who, um, you know, would they gave us the influence of, you let me know what you want to do and I will do whatever I can to help you get there. So. That's the approach that I would take. I have a feeling um, our child will have been exposed to the racing a lot more than I was when I was a kid. And um, so they probably will have made that decision before they even get close to it. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and, and I know a lot of um, you know trainers and jockeys who have children that maybe were around it so much that they really don't even have the appreciation for it and aren't interested in it. So mm. either way, um, I would or, you know, whatever, whatever my kids wanted to do, either way, I would support it 100%. And, and of course, you know, if it is becoming a jockey, then they will be um, 
as prepared as one can be with the risk and the, you know, and the skills and, and learning how to do it the safest way because it's very dangerous. Rosie, hey, Mitch Gibbs here again. Uh, I mean, you talked about your this uh, change where you have more, uh, you're in the barn more, you're with more, more with the horses more often. Could you see yourself, even with your husband working together, transitioning into being a trainer possibly as a second career in the industry? Um, you know, I really like to work under Joe, and I'm learning a lot from him. He's been in the training aspect of it for a very long time and does an excellent job. And, you know, he's really, really, really found his niche and, um, in, you know, claiming horses and improving them, and he does such a great job. Um, I have never really had an interest to go out and train on my own, um, and I don't think that I would have an interest to take out my own stable and be, you know, a competitor of Joe's and have my own outfit. Um, not at this point, that's not at all uh, in my foresight, but, um, but I do really love working with Joe, and I think working as a team, you know, whether it was when, we, when I was riding and I was riding horses, for him, um, or now, you know, working together in the barn, it really makes it, you know, family affair, and it's very enjoyable. We spend a lot of time together, which I think sometimes can be detrimental for some people, but it's really not the case at all for us. We, you know, we love what we do, and we love to spend time together, and we love to do it together, and and really work as a team. So, you know, that's really um, what what I hope to do for for you know for for the time being, and. And don't really have any aspirations to be a trainer of my own. Now, Rosie, you've spoken out before about you know, when you entered basically this man's world of being a jockey, about the intimidation that you face and how tough it was to get, to get through it. If there's a young lady out there that aspires to be a jockey today, what would you tell them as far as maybe some guidance on how do you get through that intimidation? Well, you know what's funny is I, I don't remember really how the conversation was brought up, but I was talking to Joe last night about, um, last night or the other night about um, being intimidated by such and such, whatever it was. And I thought, you know, I said to, to him out loud, I said, you know, come to think of it, I have been intimidated my entire life by, because I've been, um, you know, faced with, because I've been presented with opportunities that are challenging. Um, you know, which is a good thing. It's a, it's a very good thing, um, but definitely an intimidating thing, whether it was, you know, being intimidated by uh, galloping for Jonathan Shepard when I was 13 or being intimidated, you know, when I rode my first race or being intimidated when I went to New York and had to ride in a completely different jockey colony that was, you know, one of the strongest there is. Um, but having always had that intimidation factor... Um, I don't think a lot of other people knew that I was intimidated. And that's probably one of the best things that I was able to uh, to do was hide that intimidation and just kind of, you know, swallow hard and, and do it and figure it out and, and face that challenge. And then you come out of it um, a better rider or a better, uh, you know, promoting yourself better or doing whatever it is, you have that, you know, ultimate confidence once you've overcome a challenge. And I've been faced with so many challenges that are just really, really good opportunities. Um, and they're all intimidating, and they should be. And if you're not intimidated, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> well, Rosie Napravnik, we, we certainly miss you here. This is uh, the, the first time, the first meet in, in quite a few years, maybe back to 2009, where we haven't had Rosie Napravnik uh, on the program here and riding winners at the fairground. But uh, hopefully we're going to see you and your husband, Joe Sharp, and around the grounds and in the, the winner's circle. And uh, certainly don't be a stranger to inside track. We'll be here out throughout the meet and we really appreciate you taking your time uh, to be with us today. Thank you. Yeah, well, Joe has been in the winner's circle quite a bit already as a meet, and I will be there behind the scenes, which is, I'm actually enjoying at the moment. So, um, But it's great to still be here at the fairgrounds. We love it here, and uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. 
Okay, Rosie, thank you very much. We'll see you soon here on the fairgrounds. Thank you, Rosie, and all the best. Thank you, Rosie. All, right. all the best, too. Happy holidays. Okay. Uh -huh.